Good evening, partner. Good evening, coach. Tuesday again. <laughs> oh, my. Na-excite ako pag Tuesday. Nagkikita tayo kahit sa ano lang, online lang. Yun. Yes. Ano nang balita? Hinaabang-abangan namin yung linggo-linggo mong pagsishare ko ano na situation oh, oh. sa Kuala Lumpur. Ayun, ano, ano naman, um, on the positive side, less na yung new cases. So, bumababa na siya. And then the uh, vaccination centers, nagmumultiply siya by the week. Kasi doon naka-link yung pag-alis ng lockdown namin. Until ngayon kasi nil- naka-lockdown pa rin kami. So, no dining. Um, may, well, hindi naman kailangan ng mga permits to buy stuff. Pero talagang you stay within your district. Uh, movement control talaga. Wow. Mm-hmm. Siguro ano kaya yung equivalent dito sa Pilipinas niyang nangyayari yung, sa inyo? Tight, yung tightest ng Manila. Easy, ano ba? Easy Q? Yung... Tatitis, o. Oh. ECQ. Oh, tatitis, o. Oh. ECQ, yun. Medyo ganun. Wow. Mm-mm. Ganun pala kabigat, o. Eh. Kasi talagang, oh. ano talaga siya, eh. Kwento on, we shouldn't rest on our laurels. Kasi, um, same year, same time last year, nasa 500 cases na lang ang, 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 ang buong Malaysia. Nagkaroon lang ng isang event na election sa Saba. Mm-hmm. And then we're back to, you know, <laughs> tumakit na uli lahat. Hindi na nakababa from then. Well, I guess like dito, no, nag-iingat din tayo dun sa Delta variant na tinatawag yung sa India mm-hmm. nag-originate. No? Yes. So sabi nga natin, wag na tayong, ano, wag na tayong mag-atubiling, mag-ingat. Mm-hmm. Kasi mahaba na yung tinawid natin. You know? So, of course, we always pray for you and uh, all the people uh, in Malaysia. No? Hindi lang yung nandyan sa mga kababayan natin, kundi yung buong bansa ng Malaysia. Mm-hmm. Uh, dito naman sa atin na uh, tuloy-tuloy ang pagbabakuna yes. no? mm-hmm. at uh, yun nga, in-encourage na pati walk-in no? Lahat, mm-hmm. no? we're trying to vaccinate nga nasa A5 na pati yung mga ano, no? indigent no? at yung mga karamihan ng mga hindi natin nakakaluwag-luwag ng mga kababayan mm-hmm. no? e, talagang in-encourage na sila no? A4, ano na, ongoing, sabay-sabay na eh, no? sabay sabay na nila you know? and that's that's good, that's good no that's very good of course uh, we're seeing uh, pockets of ano no uh, mini surges and sana wa ma- 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 ano ka agad maawat agad no? mm-hmm. para hindi mangyari sa ka- probinsya yung nangyari dito sa NCR plus so, mm-hmm. ayan yeah uh, excited ang ating episode tonight no yes nakakagutom at uh, ako eh nami-miss ko na tong guest natin si hindi <laughs> kami nagsama ano pa eh 2019 no Wow. Alam lang namin, dapat Pre-COVID na talaga namin, eh, no? Matindi yung isa't isa. <laughs> Bood of, of tank, sabi nga, di ba? Oh, oh, oh. So bago yan, mag-re- mag-recap muna tayo. Nakakatuwa oh, oh. yung huling episode. Ang ganda ng response, no? Maraming mga batang Jollibee ang nanood. Eh. Oo. Oh, oh. Ano ba ang Ta- takeaways natin doon? Ayun, no? ang unang takeaway natin is Jollibee provides a solid foundation. A commitment to excellence that if you can make it in the resto industry, you can make it anywhere. Yes, o oh, pinakita doon yung pinagdaraanan no? the story ni Mr. Jeremy Espino no eh, ako talagang nakarelate ako no? but sa kanya mas maana eh. mas mahirap, mas challenging yung pinagdaanan niya but again no we see the triumph mm-hmm. no and uh, how yung mga tinanim niya mm-hmm. during the early days yung yeah. ano ako sa story nung ano eh nung determination to really make it no yung kahit may mga rejections Along the way, di ba? Sabi niya, hindi. No? Alam ko yung mm. gusto kong mangyari. I want to work in this company. I mm. want to work, you know, with these people. And uh, ang ganda, ang gandang story ha, tungkol sa Jollibee. Kasi we took that opportunity to, ano, no, medyo lagay natin yung spotlight sa mabuti tungkol sa kumpanyang Jollibee. Kasi proudly Pinoy company yan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Kaya nga natuwa din yan sa parang, yung episode natin is parang love letter to Jollibee when it mattered the most. Yes, of course, no. It's a uh, you know, I you know, easily siguro there'll be uh, more than 20,000, 25,000, even 30,000, you know, managers and leaders who have succeeded and then the next generation, generation, sabi nga natin, di ba, yung subtitle natin, generations of leaders developed by the company. Mm-hmm. And of course, it comes with that ano eh, no, yung um uh, yung pride, no, yung pride na you know, I worked for Jollibee no, I, I was a working student. Maraming ganyang story. And si Jermaine was one of the, ano lang, isa sa mga naging representative ika nga. Mm-hmm. I'm sure masusundan pa yung episode na yan. Totoo. Oo, oh, nabitin yeah. na din ako dun eh. Tapos yung, mm-hmm. glad you touched up on it. The second point is yung culture, family, quality, and discipline is a main driver of Jollibee success. 
like-valued people who are hardworking, driven, and passionate. Yeah, I shared the perspective, no? very unique perspective. No? Speaking of Singapore, doon ko nakita rin si Sir Atok. No? Si Sir Ato, Tan Man Kiong, nung, ano, no? hindi ako nahiya, nag-fanboy talaga ako. Nagpa-picture ako at kung ano yung sinasabi nila nung 1990s, kung kailan ako yung naging crew at naging uh, shift manager dati nung araw, management training, yung pa rin yung sinasabi ngayon. No? All about like-valued individuals, you know, aligned, people were aligned, coming together, parang isang pamilya, di ba? And believing in the, you know, the things that Jollibee believes in, no? Pagiging Jollibee, no? Yung pagiging Jolly while being busy as a bee. But at the same time, no? Ako, yung, yung ako for my prime hour, uh, sino, ika nga, sinagundahan ko yung sinabi ni Sir Jermaine about quality, about discipline, no? Yun yung natutunan, eh, no? Yung pride, no? Dignity in labor, di ba? Na, na inaabangan mo nga ako na Sana mas mahaba oras ko. And then you graduate to become a management trainee. And you know, the, the rest of the story is really just uh, typical, you know, relatable, but yet so powerful. Yes, yes. And then the last point is yung value generous mentors or leaders who have inspired and handpicked you and be a sponge and absorb all the wisdom that they are providing. Yesterday, tama yan. No? If you, eh, kanina lang, pinag-usapan natin sa backstage yan. Eh. If you are in a position to pay it forward, you are blessed. Now, ibig sabihin, na, na bless ka with experience, with, uh, you know, the right amount. Sabi nga, kumbaga sa pagluluto eh, no? Ang ganda ng pagkakaluto sa'yo, kulong-kulo, no? Slow, I mean, all these challenges in the past, no? And yung mga crisis na pinagdaanan, no? That made you red. Who you are right now, no? It's time to share para magkaroon tayo ng legacy. Kasi, ang dapat nating uh, isipin, nung araw, nung nagsisimula tayo, mayroon ding mga generous na mga mentors na nag, nagbigay sa atin ng break no na nag, nag, hindi nagdamot yes. na hindi nagdamot at nagbigay sa atin so it's now sabi nga pag may nagpapasalamat sa sabi ko parati i'm just paying it forward diba totoo naman ayan ang ating top 3 takeaways okay so ngayon ako magi-introduce dito sa ating kaibigan no at talagang very ano no very very unique story na tana i'm so excited to listen to at why medyo na fast break natin yung ating top three takeaway ngayon, no? yung recap natin. Because we're talking about uh, Pinoy Global Resto Leader. No? Iba, no? mamaya maray papakinggan yung story, ayaw kong pangunahan. <laughs> of course, no other than Mr. Joey Garcia, the President and CEO of 888 Holdings Incorporated. Magandang gabi, Joey. Magandang gabi, uh, Romel and Cheryl. Uh, thanks for, uh, for inviting me this evening. Uh, yung mga guests natin, parang napupun ako, parang mga mas mukhang bata sa akin, Sher, eh. For the past week, ha. Next week, mag-guest ako na medyo mas matanda sa akin. Ha. Hindi, tapos ang bata. <laughs> tapos pag sinabi yung experience, parang, ay, ilang taon na siya. Parang sa downtown gulag, eh. Oo, ganun. Parang si Sir Jermin last week, di ba? Yes. Parang pag nagkwento, ay, si Abraham ka ba? Oo. Parang ang dami. Inabot mo ba yung ano, panahon ng... Nung nag-aalay nag pa ng mga, ano, ng mga topas, <laughs> ng mga Hebreo, di ba? Ang ganun yung dating eh. Ganun. Full of wisdom. Eh ngayong gabi, ako, hindi kayo madi-disappoint. Medyo, mata- medyo konti lang ang sasabihin ko sapagat yung bisita natin, napakadaming kwento. Yan. Yeah. Di ba? So, pabatihin muna natin, Joey, ba? Greet mo muna yung mga kasama mo sa 888. Yan. Oh, okay. Good evening uh, sa lahat ng mga viewers nyo and of course sa uh, aking mga kasama sa 888 uh, uh, just uh, just came back from ano from our grand opening of our first drive through store dito sa Anabu sa Imus so kasama wow, congratulations ha at, uh, we had this uh, opening ano event no so again and then good evening sa lahat so yan nakikita niyo yung mga brand ni Joey at ng 888 diyan sa ating screen mamaya po pag-uusapan niya at syempre pa at pang grand finals natin na taga-tanong ng mga tanong. Joy, pasensya ka na rito. Pag nagtanong to, parang pang Miss Universe talaga eh. Si, si Shell. No? So, hayaan mo, taalalayan kita. Dahil medyo pag nagtanong to bro, pang grand finals to. Sige, share, fire away. Ayan, ang aking favorite na tanong all the time, ang ating origin story. Please share with us your personal journey from rising the ranks in the industry to becoming a global resto leader. Okay, medyo... Mahaba, mahabang uh, uh, so but but I'll start where I think I'm I'm like Romel no? we were uh, basically started as a crew. So I started uh, sa McDonald's in uh, 
uh, Bambanga actually zero five uh, the U in the year of eighty eight. 1988. So, siguro mga audience dito, baka iba, no? Uh, wala pa. Tayo na noon. Uh, uh, <laughs> eight pa talaga, eight pa rin. Uh, so, <laughs> o nga, no? 88 pa rin, no? Yeah. Over 30 years na yan, no? So, that's that's where I started. I literally started as a, as a crew, uh, closing. Uh, I remember nung uh, interview kami, the uh, the uh, area manager said wala kami yung opening except for the closer no yung closer you only come uh, for 4 hours a day and uh, yeah, each shift uh, you come before close before the store close and ang gagawin niyo lang maglilinis lang we don't even touch uh, no yung food handling so ang ginagawa namin maglilinis lang kami sa labas at saka sa back room no? so that's 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 exactly what we did no so for some Time, I think that's where I've learned, you know, yung, yung mga uh, trabaho sa staff, sa, sa fast food. And then eventually, I, I went abroad, uh, nagpinatubo. So the time pinatubo was 91, sometime in June, I think, if I recall. So I left. Mm, 91 yun, Joey. Oh, 91. Mag-abroad ako. Uh, went to the Middle East, Saudi Arabia in particular. And uh, kasi nga wala nang trabaho masyado sa Pilipinas that time sa area namin in Pampanga. Kasi nga uh, halos na wala na yung mga kano, di ba? So, umalis na yung mga Americans which basically majority of our customers uh, the O are from ano uh, from the base kasi malapit siya. That's the only McDonald's in uh, in Pampanga. And uh, ang karamihan ng mga guests namin are really from Clark. So nung nawala sila, so basically wala kaming kaming trabaho. So they were, we were asked to basically just wait, you know, and sometimes isang araw lang, dalawang araw sa sanglingo. So we decided to leave. We went abroad. So I joined a company uh, which is a franchisee of uh, Pizza Hut. So I worked for Pizza Hut for 14 years in you know, the Middle East. Uh, that's where I actually started my, ito na yung, ito na yung uh, from being just a uh, staff, uh, being a shift manager until I, I actually became the first Filipino uh, area manager in the no, Middle East. Nice. Time of Pizza Hut. And then eventually I actually uh, took over the uh, job of a training manager and as well as a regional manager for a certain area. And then uh, your ex boss go joined a company in, you know, in Thailand, which is in Bangkok. And the uh, message is happening. Sabi niyo nga, uh, meron na akong trabaho. Andito na ako sa Thailand. I'm actually looking after this brand and we want to expand it international. Which is in minor group, no? Sure. Kaya gusto mong pumunta rito. We have a vacancy for a training manager. No? Uh, so I joined. I joined him in Bangkok. And then we actually, uh, I helped him uh, launch a pizza company outside Thailand, no? outside Bangkok. But on my first year, uh, in, in minor group, I was asked by the CEO, which is the boss of my boss, sabi niya sa akin, sabi niya, may nakikita akong potential sa iyo. You, know? you could be you know, more than just a training manager. No? You could actually uh, uh, run a, you know, uh, a uh, country by yourself, he said. Baka gusto mong hawakan yung China market natin, sabi niya. So at first, I was very reluctant. Uh, hindi ko muna tinanggap yung offer niya. Pero hindi niya ako tinigilan. So the CEO keep coming back to me and asking me, <clears throat> reconsider mo kasi sabi niya, it's really good for you. So finally, after a few, uh, siguro a few attempts niya, I actually accepted na the offer no? na to move to China and actually look after the pizza company in China where we launched the, uh, uh, the brand sometime in uh, 2006. So 2006, that was my, siguro, less than a year pa lang ako sa, sa grupo, sa minor group. Napadala na ako sa China. And uh, from China, I actually uh, uh, launched the pizza company there. Learn a bit of the, the, the Chinese uh, way of doing business, which is not the easiest you know, uh, place to do business from a Filipino standpoint. So hindi siya ganun kadali, especially from us that doesn't speak the language of Mandarin, no? And then eventually, I think I grew the brand, and and, and I was asked at some point to go back to to, to, uh, no, to Bangkok uh, again, man, to expand the international brand 
uh, the pizza company in some sense. So I actually took that role back in, in you know in uh, Bangkok in 2000 and uh, 2010 now. So I actually spent almost four years, almost four years in Beijing, you know, based in Beijing, uh, and then I went back. And then uh, I actually launched the man it on Swensen's. I don't know if you know Swensen's and ice cream. Yes, yes, no, Swensen's. The pizza company, mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, particularly in, you know, in uh, Southeast Asia, and then also covered the Middle East. So, you know, for Southeast Asia, so I launched the brand in Kasama to Filipinas for both pizza company in Swensen, uh, Myanmar, uh, Cambodia, Laos. Uh, and also in the Middle East, no? so Saudi Arabia, Oman, Qatar, Dubai, or UAE, and also Bahrain. And at some point, I also launched a brand in Maldives. Uh, at some point, wow, shut up, Maldives. Help, help the the company also uh, uh, launch in, in India, no? in Swansea, India. So I, I covered probably at my you know think of my. Uh, Time with minor, I think I covered about 14 countries in total, you know, and most of those countries that I covered were basically, yeah, uh, it being mga difficult countries, no, mm. in, in food industry. I say at that time, uh, yung mga countries like Laos, Myanmar, and even Vietnam had just recently opened uh, for for international. Mm. So yeah, yun know, ang aking background. So overall, I have about 30. 34 years now in the industry. Uh, no? so Ayan, isa pang 12 years old nag-start. Kasi mula yung hindi ko. Ayan, gano'n. Ako si Jermin din. Sabi, no? Gano'n ang background. Medyo mahaba, mahaba ano. But uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's been, ano, uh, bless and uh, yeah, finally I'm back home. Wow. Alam mo, yung ano lang, singit ko lang, Shera. Ang hmm. magandang kwento yan. Eh. Kasi siyempre, hmm. pag hindi ka taga taga restaurant industry at ako medyo ano lang hindi kasi haba no kay Joey meron din ako Southeast Asia meron din ako mga ganyan ano akala ng marami pag pumupunta ka sa ganyang karaming bansa parang wow no magugulat ka yung mga taga restaurant ni hindi nakakapasyal yan sa mga sa mga no. tourist spots tama Joey di ba yes. kasi you go there you go there to mabilis ang pacing ng restaurant eh like Correct. for example if you do a typical visit Ang itinerary mo niyan, ano yan, punong-puno, no? Sulit na sulit yan. So, you know, I remember when I went to uh, Singapore with the uh, family, nagugulat sila dahil parang hindi ka pa nakarating dito. Sabay-sabay lang ako tayong magpupunta ngayon dito sa mga tourist spots na to. Dahil pag bumibisita kami dito, hindi ano eh, walang time para mag, ano, ah, magliwaliw eh, ka nga. Kasi you spend time with people, no? You you make up for, di ba? Kaya nga yung, yung sistema, alam mo, I'm sure ikikwento ni Joey. Yung sistema, kailangan masistema ka pag international visit. Kasi hindi ka tulad sa Pilipinas, mag area manager ka, may nakaligtaan ka. Sige, balikan ko na lang next week. Andyan lang yun, eh. Di ba? Pero ito, aeroplano to. Kapatid, no? So, yeah. medyo, sasakaling ka ng boss mo pag lipad ka ng lipad. Di ba, Joey? <laughs> Although, nung sinabi niya kanina yung 14 countries niya, parang, Isang train lang siya eh. Hindi. <laughs> Daming miles yan. Madaming oh. miles. <laughs> Ayun. Sir Joey, just to follow up on that, ano, what did it mean for you to go back after all of the, these years to the Philippines? Well, I, I think I, I came to a point na I said I had enough no, of, of my time na siguro abroad. And particularly, I, I was telling this to everyone that ask, uh, were asking me, bakit ka pa bumalik? I was an expat. So the hmm. perk of being an expat in a country like Thailand or Bangkok, I think uh, it's one of the best places to live no, in Asia. I mean, in, in Asia. Kasi mura, masarap ang pagkain. Tapos uh, madali access to wherever you want to go. No? And kids are enjoying it, the families are enjoying it there. But I came to a point that I, I felt that uh, I think uh, I need to go back no, and give something back to our country. So really yeah. about the determination and, and not, not necessarily giving back to our country, but maybe it's the same, you know, same approach that, that you have, Romel, no, trying to go and really nurture this young uh, future leaders of our industry. Because that's naman talaga para to sustain the industry. Natin, no? but, mm -hmm. We have to start really, be, you know, uh, uh, nurturing those young leaders, no, as an industry, and that's one of my, you know, key motivation. And the, the the second is really, you know, 
Uh, I think, uh, as I said, uh, I had a bit of uh, time now, and, uh, and I was really looking forward to see a different side of my you know, career in, in, in my own country. So this is the second reason why I'm back. Alam mo, sir, blessed ako eh. Kasi nung na-meet ko si Joey, hindi naman kakabalik, pero you know, I, I, I remember that time. No? Sabi ko nga, medyo ano, blessed ako na sa industry na meet ko yung mga iba't ibang tao. And when we met, alam mo yung ano, yung feeling na ano, na nakaka-relate ako sa kanya. At the same time, I you know, I look up to him, no? Uh, hindi ko sinasabing mas matanda si Joey sa akin, pero yung yung feeling mo yung kausap mo, parang you have you have a lot to learn from him and you know, from day 1, no? From minute 1 talaga, no? That's why parang ano kami, no? I mean, I can only speak for myself, Joey, but even in, in Singapore and during the times na nagkakasama kami, you can really feel yung ano, no? Yung common purpose of uh, you know, doing this for the country doing this for ano tama yung sinabi niya no he, you know masarap maging expert eh sa totoo lang di ba the perks the benefits etc and you know how how you 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 get i, I would imagine no 30 plus years doing that and you know it was a i, I would imagine no i wala to wala sa set of questions but i would like for you to maybe explain sa amin yung yung adjustment mo no Papa, yung i mean di ba ang tagal mong nawala mm-hmm. and then when you came back di ba what mga okay. friends mo, in dati mo mga kaibigan na, di ba, umalis ka, 19, ano bro? 1990. 91. 91, wow. di ba? Imagine oh, ibang, that. Ibang iba pa, oo. So, ano feeling nung bumalik ka? Yo, medyo na yung human side of the story. Ano oh, feeling oh. nung bumalik ka? I was, you know, you're right. Kasi yung mga bata noon, naging matanda na. So, that's... <laughs> <laughs> yung mga kaibigan mo na, uh, you know, that uh, been like a childhood friend mo uh, have gone to different thing now so some of them are still there and but i think i was lucky because most of uh, most of my friends at mcdonald's are still enough uh, very we're still very close we still catch up during weekends of my time coming uh yeah it was but it wasn't uh, it wasn't a big adjustment to me because i whenever i go back home or whenever i visit because part of the market is philippines also uh, so I really have a lot of time. Uh, maybe uh, to the Philippines is six or seven times a year. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I'm ako and I, 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 I have time uh, to meet friends and, and catch up with them. With them. Pero, pero iba, iba pa rin pagka yung nandito ka lang talaga. No? Na mm. You can uh, somehow uh, have more time uh, to do things that you wanted to do with them uh, for, for a long time. And of course, the family. Yung family mo. Uh, it was a little bit of adjustment lang, of course, the yung beginning at the start, kasi yung convenience ka ng expat outside is different to what you do, what you'll experience here in, ano, in the Philippines, particularly yung, ano, yung movement, no? hindi ganun mm. ka convenient before, but now it's easy, kasi uh, parang EDSA, it's a, it's a nightmare, no? uh, when you go to <laughs> pass through EDSA, but now there's a, there's a skyway, so mabilis na mag move to uh, anywhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Coach, na mention yun yung meetup. Ano yung specific time na and when did you pa- meet up? Ako, 2018 siguro. 2018 eh kasi tapos 2019 nagkasama kami sa ano Global Restaurant Leaders yes. Conference. Eh. Correct. So, medyo ano na ako noon, medyo ma nilalabas ko na yung dibdib ko kasi katabi ko si Joey, ang daming kakilala eh. <laughs> Dami kakilala ni Joey, eh. ito totoo. Kasi kami nung pumunta kami ni ano bro, pumunta kami ni Zark nung unang punta namin sa Dubai. Wala kaming ganong kakilala eh. Wala ah, yeah. ganong kakilala, di ba? O, tapos sabi nga namin, uy, swerte sa Singapore gagawin. So ang daming Pinoy, di ba? Nandiyan yung, yeah. yung kakilala natin. So masaya. Masaya uh, kami nun eh, no, sa Singapore. Hindi naman namin alam, magkakapandemya, di ba? Yes, tama, tama. Ang ganda-ganda ng kwentuhan nun eh. Ang saya-saya, ang daming Pilipinong umatin. Sabi nga namin, no, tama yung decision nila to hold it here in Asia. Mm. And sayang hindi nasundan. But I'm sure, no, in the future, magkakaroon ulit. Oh, malapit na yan. Yes. Yun. And then, what are the crucial elements when developing and pursuing success in the international resto scene? Yan. Lalabas ko na yung notebook ko. Yan. Ayan. <laughs> so, yeah, I think, I think uh, uh, again, I think it's international... Uh, you know, it's it's a bit uh, lahat yata ng mga iba-ibang experience ko sa pag-open ng market. Because uh, cause I, I normally open a market, so I, I don't actually take over. So I actually open a market from nothing. No? So it's 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 really from ground zero. 
So I have different experience from one country to another, but there are some, some common denominator right, on, on how you really, uh, uh, on a critical success factor when you enter a new market. No. But one thing I do, which I think it's very important is learn the country first, no? the culture. So I, I normally, if I, if I wanted to go into a, uh, or we would like to bring the brand to one country, particularly I invest time in really understanding the market. No? I buy a book and I try to understand what or go through uh, any 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 resources that I'll try to understand what's what's the market. No? Try to understand the demographics of the market, you know, uh, and another important uh, data no? to, to support why you're going there. No? And then uh, I think uh, the others are basically uh, try to understand the you know the ease of doing business in in the market that you're going to. So it, that's very critical because. Uh, some countries, it's not exactly the same on how they actually even do permitting and so on. No, maraming mga iba na iba yung laws nila, iba yung, yung procedures nila and so on. And some of them are not easy to deal with, especially yung mga government. No? So government-related uh, policies and so on. So understand that ease of doing business on how difficult that be. And, uh, you know, and, uh, I think the other element that are very crucial also or very critical to, for you to understand is the dynamics of supply chain. No? You say, even if you have a good brand, if you cannot bring your product or you cannot source your product, I don't think you could actually be successful mm -hmm. in any market that you go to. No? So I understand the, the dynamics of supply chain. If you cannot uh, local uh, source uh, the, 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 the materials that you need locally, then you might end up, you know, uh, sourcing it uh, or importing that from your, from international, from wherever it's coming from. No? So that's going to be an additional cost, you know, if you put that mm -hmm. in. Yeah, no? And uh, I think the, the others are really understanding your competition. No? Your competitive landscape in, in the market is important to understand. And, and, and then lastly, I think you, you really have to understand that you really have a market because sometimes you get tempted that we want to go international and we want to bring the brand, but there is market. So if, if there is a market, then, then don't waste your time. Go for another country that there might be an opportunity for you rather than you try to push your... your because we've done that in many occasions, but uh, after we put a business plan, you know, put, put a proper business plan, I, I'll have to pull back and say, no, this is not for us. And even though we have a potential partner, I have to make a, a decision that uh, said, no, kahit may merong potential partner na kami, the, the data, the information, you know, the, 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 science, the scientific information that you have with you, plus your gut feel, tells you that this is not the market where you need put your, your, your energy and resources. No? So rather mm -hmm. than you do that, you actually go and focus on the countries that there is more potential for you na, na mag-grow. Kasi that's, I think that's where you have to be smart on putting your resources and your energy or time. No? So... I think those are very few, but again, I think I'll give you one story. You know, when we went to uh, open a, a pizza company in Swansea in Myanmar, that time, when I first went to the country, I was in, went to, I think, 2007, I think, when I first went there. Oh, yeah, I was flying from China and went there. They don't even accept credit card. No? Credit card. <laughs> 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 yeah, credit card. No? So, so at some point we were looking at the, how we will be uh, bringing the, the raw or sourcing the raw materials. We have actually to uh, to shift all of our raw materials by land, no? And you know the land that they have to pass through is one way. It is a bit, and on a certain schedule of a, a certain specific day and time lang, pwedeng duman yung truck from Thailand border down to Myanmar, you know. So. So that they, they so you have to be very specific. Na hopefully hindi masiraan to. And after that, they papasa pa nila ito. Itatawi nila ng, ng, ng river. And then there's another truck waiting on the other side. And so on and so forth. No? And then we, I, I recall no, that we we have to, since walang, uh, walang uh, credit cards, and then, you know, the, the currency of Myanmar is thousands of uh, dollars. Diba? Bayong bayong. So bayong bayong doon. Uh, yeah. At <laughs> some point, they have to carry a, uh, load of money in one uh, van just to pay for the rental of the office that they are. So all, all of that are just few experiences that I actually have somehow, you know, lucky to or blessed being able to get all of those experiences because 
you know, without those, I won't be able to even look at the, those very important you know, elements to be successful in the international market. But again, like what Romel said, you, know, you build up those experiences, you build up those uh, learnings, and eventually, you know, you, you come to any of those conditions, you know exactly what to do. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, that's good for you. The more experiences that we actually you know, uh, get through, the better for us to make a sound decision whenever things happen to us and then we know exactly how to deal with them. No? Galing, no? I mean, you know, yung mga story na ganyan, hindi, ano yan, priceless eh. Uh, yung priceless. That's why yun po yung ating ginagawa dito every week. No? We try to our best to invite people who can share yung talagang mga insights and tips that can only come from years of experiences. No? Yung hindi natin kayang i-replicate, yun po yung sinasabi natin parati dito, you know, before making a decision, you have to have, sabi nga ni Joey kanina, i-reiterate ko lang, data or information, no? which is easy, no? relatively easier. Pero yung experience, not necessarily na kayo, kayo pa yung kailangan nyo pang danasin. No? Kaya natin iniimbita yung mga resto coaches natin weekly rito, iba't iba sila ng perspective, iba't iba ng background, no? diverse, para po mayroon tayong pakikinabangan. Our library is actually now on our 56th episode. So, imagine ninyo, no, kung talagang prosigido lang po kayo, bago nyo simulan. Ideally po, ang payo natin parati is before you start your business. No? Mag, yung due diligence to review, to watch, and nung araw, magbabasa ka pa. Nabanggit ni Joey kanina, magbabasa ka ng aklat. No? No? Ang hihiram ka ng encyclopedia. Na po, ibuhay nyo po ngayon, napakadali. No? Iginugugle lang lahat. No? Di ba? Nung araw, pag may assignment ka na medyo pang grand finals, <laughs> sa kapitbahay ka tatakbo alam mo kung sino yung OFW na kapitbahay mo kaya may kamag-anak sa abroad dahil malamang may encyclopedia yon o kaya either abogado yung tatay or medyo nakakaluwag-luwag sa buhay pwede po bang makahiram ng letter H no? yeah. matatawa yung nanonood pero totoo yun no? pwede po bang makahiram ng encyclopedia Ay, hindi pwedeng ilabas dito mo lang basahin so ikaw naman papasok ka sa bahay ng kapitbahay may dala kang yellow pad di ba? Okay. Si Joey natatawa, malamang naranasan din niya yan, di ba bro? Yeah. Yan ang buhay sa Pilipinas, eh, di ba? And ngayon, it's very easy. Kaya in-encourage ko po kayo, no? all the episodes are actually on YouTube. No? Nilalagay po ni Sherry yan immediately after the, ano, no? the episode here. And it's also on Facebook. So, wala po tayong reason. It's 56 episodes, iba't iba po yan. Meron tayong guest about, you know, topics, about, uh, episodes about leadership, uh, episodes about Naging guest natin, yung Shakey's Pizza ngayong gabi, Conti's, Wendy's, no, Mr. Joey Garcia, pizza company yan for the longest time. Yung minor group share, hindi minor yun. Major group yun. Major. Malaking group yun. <laughs> no, Nakatotawa nga ako sa pangalan nila, minor oh, group. Minor. Eh. Ang laki nung contingency, yung contingent nila nung ano, yung nakarang conference. Eh. There's a story so, behind that, Romel. No? Yung minor, uh, the founder, which is William Heineke or Bill Heineke, started his business when he was 17 years old. Minor, you know, ah, minor no, minor. <laughs> actually to register his company, but he was technically a minor. So mm. the lawyer said, We cannot, you know, you still have to get a consent from your parents. So, siya, since minor, siya, he called it minor. Na lang. Sabi niya, he started with the you know, uh, cleaning uh, services, ang unang business. Niya. Kaya nga yung, in picture ni Bill sa, in, sa lobby in, uh, was when he was like 17 years old carrying a map and a bucket. No? So, mm. ni Galing, ano? Very, very inspiring. Inspiring. So, yes, yeah, share. Tuloy mo na yung, na, ano, yung na, pagtatanong. Na, natuwa ako dun sa perspective na binigay ni Sir Joey kasi di ba pag tinatanong ng mga tao, kaya minsan the moment that, that you said you came from abroad, they see stars already, di ba? They see the peak of your success. But to provide the perspective na I, I know at one point, especially sa mga first few experiences niya in the difficult countries na parang, alam ko, ano ba itong pinasok ko? <laughs> but you got through it and actually eventually kaya yung, yung, yung spirit mo in terms of adapting and understanding, nahasa na na siya ng nahasa. So I think that that's the perspective that, that you provide when you, do, when you did come back and then yung, yung pag-transfer mo ng knowledge na yun. I, I share. I have to share you one one of my best experience when I actually first uh, flew into uh, Karachi. No, uh, so I was sent to Pakistan because we have our chairman has a good uh, good friend on that he basically wants to start his. Uh, he has his uh, own uh, uh, hospitality 
business, but he wants to particularly open restaurant. No? So he asked me to go and meet him in Karachi. <laughs> so <laughs> imagine at that peak of the, uh, yung may mga ano pa, uh, yung, mga, uh, yung mga nagsundo sa akin sa, sa airport were carrying AK, yung mga malaking... Uh, AK-47, uh, mga ganun. <laughs> You know, and then we were in a in a, a few cars, no? Like because they said, may mga nangyayinap doon sa, sa Karachi. And, that, mm. and the security and the hotels were basically meron silang three line of defenses for security alone. Kasi may mga bombing, you know. So, yes, again, I mean, those are a few of experiences that you cannot really, you know, uh, take out the yung mga important learnings natin over time. So, you accumulate. <laughs> Ayun. So, speaking of ano, stories, top three favorite stories of your most successful initiatives naman that led you to your path in successfully growing local as well as global brand. Ah, oh, okay. So, yeah, three, no? Three most, uh, you know, I think we have so much good stories there. Eh? But uh, I'll, I'll give you one particular story that I did in China. Uh, Beijing, no? well, China. Kind of when I actually took over there, the 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 brand was already existing, but they had difficulty of uh, turning turning around the business, uh, and and uh, the uh, the uh, they're struggling to manage the you know, the uh, the cash as well as uh, the uh, the brand doesn't actually getting any grip no in the market. So I was asked basically to uh, to. Uh, Parang ano to, uh, mission impossible, no? Because <laughs> <laughs> they, they had the difficulty. So I have to come there and then, and then replace a Chinese guy who look after uh, the, the brand and then report to American guy. Uh, in a span of the 18 months, I was able to turn around the, the business. So from a, from a negative uh, operating contribution to a positive uh, net profit. So that was in 18 months. Uh, so take to make, make it short, you know, the, it wasn't easy, but uh, it took a lot of time for us actually to bring the brand into a profitable and also manage to expand it. But more to that, I think uh, I'll give you one good story also in China. When I went there, I actually have to be very aggressive in terms of expansion. Some actually had the success. Uh, we, we had some success in, some, in most of our expansion in Beijing. And I have particular learnings. I mean, uh, experience. Uh, I had this. Uh, uh, I actually secured the site, <clears throat> which is uh, in part of this very uh, prominent area near the uh, near the Olympics. Uh, I say 2008 was the Olympics in Beijing. No? So <clears throat> I, uh, there was this very good location, and I was very bullish about the location. I think a corner, and so I took it. And then I, I, it's a very old uh, building that is part of their parang heritage ano na nila area. No? So I insisted to build it to, into, a, into a restaurant, but came a point na nagko-construct na kami. So everything was start, you know, na tapos ng design and everything. We need to reinforce namin yung building para ma, yung, yung structure niya is ma-reinforce at tumibay kasi parang luma na siya. Mm-hmm. The local authority came to us and they told us, you can't build anything here because they are mm-hmm. Parang UNESCO protected siya, but they have a different term, no? But I already spent over 1.3 million in, in terms of uh, initial investment, no? To put that into uh, para commercial construction niya from paying the rentals in advance and so on. So we were in deadlock and I asked my boss, uh, uh, sabi ng boss ko, I'll come to Beijing and, and check the situation kasi nasa, nasa Thailand siya nakabase. So I was, I had sleepless night, no? more than the success of the few success that I had in the first 18 months. This was probably one of my worst decisions. Mm-hmm. And then I had so much sleepless night and I was really very worried about this, the, the, the ito naging decision ko. And then my boss came in, you know? and then my boss, I told him I have to tell you something. I said, uh, I have a big problem. Sabi sa kanya. Ano yun? Sabi ko sa akin. I, I brought him, pinakita ko yung location, I think yung location. And uh, we were stopped, no? and we cannot continue anymore. In fact, uh, we were asked to unlock the facility, and we can't get in anymore. So in China, you, if the government says you can't do anything, you can't do anything. Mm-hmm. Basically, and we have a 1.3 million remedy no, that that we're there sitting in. And so, I thought, "Oh, you're fired." No? <laughs> mm-hmm. 
So the boss, my boss told me, uh, don't worry about it. Sabi niya sa akin, take the 1.3 billion as my investment for you. Sabi niya, for your, ano, for your Learning. experience. <laughs> so so I, I took that really as a, as a very good, ano, uh, sort of a uh, uh, learnings from, from especially dito sa situation, sa akin sa Beijing and I became a bit different when I went back no, and, and did some work and, and do a bit more of work outside Thailand. And I was very careful, you know, when it comes to site selection, location, location, location. But more mm -hmm. to that is actually just getting more disciplined and putting a system, not really bulletproofing your, uh, your, your decision in finding a site. So those are just few that, uh, that I have good, good uh, you know, uh, experience as well as bad, but turn out to be very good in, in the turn because I have to do things differently. I have to create some discipline you know, within, within us, within our system that ensures that we will have almost zero errors no? in terms of finding and building the right, uh, the right source for us. So yun yung siguro ang man. But I, I have more, but I don't know if you have more time, no? but uh, I think that's a very good uh, a story that I could share with you. But I think most of us leaders sometimes, you know, uh, we, we really have to invest with our people. Uh, and I think one of the investments is to allow them to make mistakes sometimes. So, yes, yes. Yeah, I agree. Advice, uh, they're very, uh, I think we have a lot of young people in, 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 in you know, uh, young leaders now that uh, are very willing to take risks, but sometimes they were stopped. No? So that those are a few of my early experience in my career that really allows me to grow because of my boss. Yeah. Reinforce ko siguro yon yung point na siya napakalagang puntos non all for not only for the managers and uh, employees in restaurant industry that are listening but more so for the ano no business owners that you have to really invest in your people and I'd like to highlight no yung to for Joey to get to that point that tawag kasi yan yung ano no uh, cost of error no meron na siyang ano eh meron na siyang naipun, naipundar sa boss niya hindi naman yung tipong no, hindi naman yung tipo baguhan siya. So, that's also the, the importance of establishing your credibility, your trustworthiness, uh, your your ownership, no? So, all of those things factored in. Kaya yung boss ni Joey decided na no, ikaw yan. Uh, I I you know, I know that you didn't make that mistake intentionally or you, di ba? And you know, it's part of the investment. Yun yung binabanggit natin share, no? That uh, habang empleyado ka pa, no, iba yung nagbabayad pa ng tuition fee mo, ika nga, di ba? Mm -hmm. Yung mga employers, they're paying your tuition fee for you to learn how to run the business. And ang pinaka, ika nga, the least that we could do as our appreciation is to, to run the business as, it, as, it, uh, as if it was our own. Yung ownership, no? Hindi yun pwede yung, oh sige, pagka nag, na may negosyo na ako, saka ako ilalabas yung sense of ownership. No? Uh, I think well, that was, that, that's one of the things that you know the, the the employer or the boss saw in Joey you know at uh, speaking of mga tao na kaibigan ni Joey nako magagalit sa akin itong si architect Michael De Guzman no common friend natin to Joey di ba oh, architect Mike oh dati kasama ko to at saka yung uh, wife niya magandang gabi si architect good evening po resto coach excited to watch uh, this episode with our dear CEO and president no ang dami pong bumabati dito na kaibigan ni Sir Joey from Saudi Arabia no, meron siya nagbabanggit na even si Harvey Magnaya, sabi niya, dati niya po kayong kasama sa pizza company. Of course, sa restaurant, hindi mo na maalala lahat ng pangalan. But pag nakita mo yung mga mukha, di ba? No, uh, na, natatandaan mo rin sila eh. Maraming salamat po sa panonood. Of course, uh, Ray Andrada Dolatre, Shai De Viles, magandang gabi po, Marie Basco. No, nag, nag, Nagko-converse na yung mga nanonood eh, amongst themselves kasi small world nga naman. Ano? Nakilala mo rin pala si Sir Joey. No? Parang mga ganun eh. Mga ganun kwento rito. Magandang gabi po kay Sherwin na uh, Julius De Leon sa Langsan. Kaka-birthday lang nito mga taga Valenzuela. Magandang gabi sa inyo lahat. At mga taga Quezon po, Madeline Gordino. Uh, magandang gabi sa inyo, Miss MM. No? Uh, Donald Tenorio, from, of course, from Australia. No? From Australia po, hindi sa Australia. Sa Australia po yan talaga. Nandun po talaga yan. Down under nung dinalaw ko dyan. No? Ito po, Sir Joey, si Ray Andrada Dulatre. Magandang gabi. Uh, watching from Saudi Arabia, Mr. Joey Garcia was my former boss in Riyadh. Sa Riyadh pala, Sir Joey. I'm so proud of your success, Boss Joey. Yan. No, uh, Richard Ong. Ito naman, representing Hawaii. No? Ito po, eh, galing rin po ito sa industriya ng restaurant. No? Dating Outback Steakhouse po ito si Richard Ong. Na ngayon po ay nasa Hawaii. No? 
At si Sir Jeremy, nanonood din po, much respect for Joey. Uh, another example of a great leader. Salamat sa iyo, Sir Jermaine. Miss Ruth, yung kanyang may bahay, nanonood din po. Cheng Mercado, San Diego. No? Parang magalit yung mga nag nanonood. Pag di natin nabati, Rodel Crotario. No? Mula sa Shangri-La Hotel naman po yan. No? Jordan Bernardo, chef, mula sa Mad Cafe. No? Mga Mad Cafe, congratulations sa mga bago niyong binubuksan na mga outlets. Nagpapasalamat po ko. Dindo Bistrenyo, no? Ah, uh, ito po ay uh, kasama ko rin sa Jollibee for the longest time no si Sir Dean Dobrisueño. Ayun, nagkakilala sila ni Michael sa pagpanonood nila pareho. <laughs> Nakakatuwa eh. Parang nagkakakilala sila rito. Natutuwa ako. Of course, Mariner De Guzman linggo-linggo nagsi-share at nag nagla-like ng ating mga episodes. Maraming salamat po sa mga nagsi-share no. Nakakatulong po tayo sa pagpapalaganap ng ating adbokasya. Ito si Rens Ferrer, nagpabakuna na to. Ang dami pong nababakunahan na ngayon sa mga Restaurant frontliners at matagal na po nating isinusulong yan na dapat po talagang unahin ng ating mga food handlers. They deserve to be vaccinated. Maraming salamat po sa mga LGU na, 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 na tumutulong sa ating mga A4 kung tawagin ano, mga A4. So thank you very much po sa lahat ng mga mayors at uh, iba pang mga personnel ng gobyerno na tumutulong sa mga taga-restaurant industry. Miss Peachy of uh, Unilever Food Solutions, of course, hindi nawawala yan. Okay, sige, tuloy po natin ang ating kwentuhan, Miss Share. No? Ayan. Ayun. So, meron tayong experience on both global and local. So, what's the difference between hometown versus global brands? At saka, ano yung approach nyo? Ah, okay. So, I think the the difference between the two, uh, again, uh, uh, pagka titignan mo yung sistema ng internationals, always comes back with the number of years that been existing no? uh, yung existence sila sa industry so i think if if we are coming from mcdonald's you know or or other other fast food brand that came here in the early 80s so you will benefit from the system you know and i think a lot of our local brands have somehow adapted from those systems as well oh, yeah. that are that those companies are so i think those are something that are very uh uh you could say leverage from from those international brands but uh, i i mean i i had uh, the, the experience from both side of the fence no uh, I, I i i worked for international brand i also worked for a local brand now and also even before no i say we 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 also develop local brand but even local brand uh, they also have systemic uh, i think it's it's uh, no difference but although uh, systems are ba basically uh, Nandito sila no? sa, sa, sa setting ng Pilipinas. And I think that's where uh, most of us, uh, I think, really have to start thinking outside that, that, uh, that premise of just being local. Because any brand can be international naman eh. uh, And I think uh, the exposure is very important. You know, being open to new things, uh, innovations is, is very important. Trying new things is also very important. Uh, and adapting no, to, to the changes of our industry. Uh, I think I have seen a lot of our local brands that are really successful in their days that are failing to cope up because they were very reluctant to change. No? And, and I think that if, if they were just adaptive enough and be able to open up and see things what's going on outside the, outside the Philippines, I think they'll be able to stay on top, on top of the uh, same caliber as the international ones. To me, it's just the it's just how we will adapt and and we consider ourselves are also uh, as an international brand. The moment we start opening, I think there the knowledge will come in, you know, the new system, the innovation will come in. But when we close our ourselves, you know, and we think that we're good enough, I think that's that's the end point uh, for local brands. Dadagdagan ko lang share para ano rin ano mm -hmm. sa mga nagte-take down ng notes na ako po marami kong naisulat doon sa huling mga puntos na sinabi ni Sir Joey. Uh, pa-take note na lang po natin no. Uh, tama po yung I totally agree with him. Hindi po yung kung nasa ang lugar tayo. Ang importante po ay yung paglalagay ng tamang sistema at mataas na standards. Yun po napakalaga po noon. Huwag po tayong mag-isip na pwede na sa Pilipinas lang naman eh, di ba? Napakaano po noon, no? napaka-iga nga, nakakalungkot. Kung ganun tayo mag-isip. Tandaan po natin, ang Pilipino, kahit sa ang lugar mo ilagay, nagsasaksit po yan. No? Ito pong bisita natin is one, just one example of many, di ba? Nasabi nga, ang Pinoy, pag dinala mo yan sa abroad, talagang ano yan, nagiging superstar eh. 
Alam niyo, sikreto lang po talaga ron. Tama si Sir Joey, no? yung sistema at yung standards. We just need to elevate our standards and ensure the discipline uh, with regards to yung commitment natin to excellence. Ika nga, di ba? So marami rin pong mahagip yan. Hindi lang po sa trabaho, sa pagninegosyo, no? even as a country. If we continue to elevate our standards, ika nga, yung tech transfer nangyari na, no? yung mga katulad ni Joey na umuwi galing sa matagal na stint. From abroad, may dala-dala po yung ano, no? may dala-dala ng technology at best practices at kaisipan na mas malawak, no? Uh, kaisipan na mas malawak. So let's take advantage and learn from that, no? Na lahat posible. Tayo naman na nagsaset ng standards sa sarili natin. So yun din I find I just found it ano share that we needed to add that uh, para ma mabuo yung ano natin, no? Practical tips. No, not it should not be taken for granted. It's not yes. the country, but uh, the mindset, no, and the heart set also. That's true. That's true. I think also yung uh, what um Sir Joey has also highlighted yung perspective na malit na ngayon ng mundo. So wala na yung Pilipinas lang, yung lang factor wala na. I mean, as simple as our show reaches around more than fifty countries already, and hmm. because we have we have something to say and it's important. So think of it as hindi lang yung iyo offer mo sa isang company or sa sa as a leader provide value when you provide value you bring it to the table na commit to excellence but okay and then ito masaya din to kindly share with us your top business management and brand building insights and and pandemic proof practical tips for food and resto negotiations yeah na yeah okay so uh, i think we're We've been a uh, hot topic everywhere. No, it's the same question that I uh, from. I know from most of the recent uh, interview or or conference that I actually attend, especially how uh, did we cope up, you know, and and be able to navigate this uh, COVID or this pandemic. Uh, I think the first and foremost, you really have to stick with your deeper purpose. No? So I think. Uh, that's very, very important. Uh, if you have a very shallow purpose, you're just looking after financial benefits, I'm sure you will struggle. You'll find it difficult. Huh? But if you have a deeper purpose, really, uh, and, and understand that vision that you have and that purpose and stick with that, I think you'll have more resources to wake up each morning and be able to do exactly what you need to do. No? So I think that's that's very, very important. I think secondly, uh, that's that's actually uh, our, our probably one of our one of our uh, 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 things that we practice even at the early stage of the you know, of the pandemic. Now, I re reinforce, re-emphasize our purpose, and, and our purpose is really delighting not only our guests but also our employees. Now. So we look after our employees, and we one of the things that I may I actually had committed to everyone at some point. I said. None of you will lose job. No. So that, that to me is my purpose. So that, that is a deeper purpose of, of, of Conti's core 888 or Wendy's. No. Not just being uh, getting that financial return, as I said. And then I think uh, for a lot of us, you know, to get through this pandemic, I think most of the business leaders are finding and uh, uh, looking at the obvious one. No? I think I think I find it the other way around. I always looked at the unobvious because I think when you find the obvious, someone else is already doing that faster than you. Uh, so so I actually look at the things that others doesn't see, and and, and I always stick with with uh, if this is something that will actually have a complement with the brand, or with the group, or with the business that we're running, I'll actually tap in and actually exploit that that un, unobvious one. No? I, I, I think that's, that to me is one of the critical things that we did. And uh, the others are probably just the itong mga result of our initiatives that we did. No? Uh, you know, kasi ang digital transformation is already the result of the new normal. No? So we can't really take that out. The, the, change, uh, the, the changes of behavior of consumers are drastically uh, you know, change your expectation. You know? So you really have to keep up. If you don't, you, you basically lost it. But I think what is important for business leaders like us is to be able to see what is the current, not just the current needs of the new normal, but being able to see what will be the future needs. You know, how will we be able to predict that? Huh? And how will you be able to create the bridge to basically cross that over? And, and I think uh, to us, we're getting there as early as now. 
we are not really focusing on just uh, addressing the current issue that we have, but we are actually look uh, a little bit ahead of, of, of what our customers' expectations are. And to be honest, I think uh, we no one actually expect, as I was telling the audience uh, or the, the, our, 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 our guests today, this afternoon, I said, you know, everyone was telling me about this uh, drive-through uh, cake concept that we built in Imos Anabu for Contis. But I said, that concept is not a pandemic concept. No? The concept was actually part of what we have as our, our strategy as early as 2019 no? when we did our, our workshop in, in Antipolo. And that came out as part of our strategy for 2020. It came a little bit delayed because of the uh, pandemic, but so as I'm saying, uh, there is a, a, a short-term need for us to address the current challenges, but also do not forget that if you're already, if you're still here, that means you survive already. So don't just, don't just, don't just stay. <laughs> so don't just keep doing uh, uh, fixing problems, but rather also have a focus on the long term. And I think I think that is uh, that is where we're more you know uh, focused on at the moment. You know, really driving that. Uh, that uh, uh, that direction for the next uh, two years and three years from now, uh, because as I said, uh, whatever we have done over the past few few eight months so far, or over over twelve months so far, from a digital transformation and different formats, uh, you know, uh, creating the uh, this uh, our bulletproofing our supply chain are just part of the normal business. So. I, I think that's that's what I, I could share rather than just be focused on what you require or to address now is be able to see what will be the future needs of your current customer, your future customers, you know, in, in, in the next few years. So that, that keeps you a bit more advanced huh, than, than, than the uh, normal and uh, young, young uh, not necessarily compet competition, but really advanced in towards thinking on how you will be addressing those future expectations of your customers. Yeah. Ang dami kong naisulat sa notebook ko, siyempre. Ikaw ba? Oo, oh, oh, ang dami na. <laughs> Mapapagkasya mo ba sa ano yan, sa top three takeaways? Oo, oh, oh, challenge Kaya yan, maya. pero I, I'm a try. <laughs> uh, bago tayo pumunta sa ating top three takeaways, no, sa naging akong dispensa sa mga, napakarami pong nagko-comment, hindi ko na po kayo nabati lahat, pero karamihan po ito yung mga nakasama ni Sir Joey sa, sa iba sa Saudi, no? Iba currently sa Wendy's, magandang gabi po sa inyo sa kontis, magandang gabi po sa inyo sa mga sumuporta at yung iba po nagsasabi na ano, yes sir, we can, eto si Sir Vincent Paolo Conti, no? sabi na yes sir, we can compete, go global so, before that of course we'll give our our guest no? ang ating kaibigan at resto coach for the week uh, a moment to siguro ano, no? to, to give some advice or say what he wants to say to address our audience most of which are currently nagtatrabaho sa industriya, nag aspire mag-open ng sariling resto negosyo. So take it away, Sir Joey. Ano po bang mensahe niyo po? Uh, I think, obviously, you know, I've been in this industry for over 30 years, as I said, so I, I love what I'm doing. So I think for anyone who likes to get into industry, I think the first thing is, you really have to love what you do. No? So if, if it's your passion to be in food industry, then be it. Put everything that you have. No? One of the things I've learned, uh, or even my early stage of my career, uh, I give everything that I have. No? I can uh, have uh, zero sleep if I need to, just to do what I need to do. So that, that even at the early stage. No? I think uh, that to me, you really have to love what you do first. No? And uh, for a lot of uh, the young generations, you know, uh, things come so easy, so fast. Eh? But as we learn from a different way, and I think that's still important now, to get to the ground. I always tell every single new employee that I have, get to the store, immerse, and do exactly what the staff are doing, you know. And if you're in the operations, make sure you're better than the operation, you know, the staff. Because you cannot get any credibility if you don't understand the operation. So be ready for that. No? So it, it, I think uh, sometimes you go from, uh, you know, fresh grad, have a master's degree and we think we know everything already. But the only thing that you could really bring is just the theory, you know, but uh, uh, take off your sleeve, I mean, uh, raise your sleeve and really work and really understand 
basic of operations because that is really where the core of our business is. So. And uh, I think for uh, for uh, a lot of these young entrepreneurs, so, don't be afraid to fail. I think that's one of the things that I mentioned a little bit earlier of, uh, of our discussion. You know, without those failure, I think I wouldn't be here and, and coaching or mentoring a lot of my uh, leaders in, in my group. The only reason why I could actually tell them exactly or teach them or coach them is because I've learned from it already. No? It's so young. It, it, Yung, yung, yung learning of from failing is already uh, a, a sort of an investment for me that I carry until now. And, and I think a lot of our, 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 our young leaders are afraid to take that step because they think they don't know how to do it. They, they, they are un, un reluctant, you know, they're, they're uncertain if they will, uh, 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 you know, be successful or fail. So I think it's important to take that first step. Uh, and then I think uh, one of the... Uh, Thing that I really, uh, you know, uh, learned from this industry is you can have a very aggressive goal, you know, and, and a very uh, uh, hairy uh, goal, uh, big hairy goal and vision, but without the right team with you, uh, you can't go anywhere. So make sure if you're very aggressive, if you're very, you know, uh, if you want to build a business, uh, make sure you bring the right team with you. you know? And not just bring the right team, develop the right team also that actually can go along with you, with your journey. And maybe the, the last thing that I always tell everyone, even in my team, you know, with all the success that everyone in, like us in the industry, do not forget to give back to the community. Uh, I think that's very important uh, because that's where really our purpose is. Eh? So, you know, uh, most of the others think that the, 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 the reason why we exist is because of financial returns. I think financial return is a result, uh, but, uh, but more to that, we have obligation, uh, moral obligation, you know, social responsibility to look after the community around us. So always, always put that into your considerations and, and make sure you have a program in your company to give back to the community around you. Yun siguro ang mga advice ko sa, I'm sure you're already like one minute left na nang tayo sa, sa time, you know, but uh, those are just few of, of the advices that I could give to, to, to aspiring entrepreneurs natin sa, sa food, no? sa, sa restaurant industry. Galing, no? Talagang ano. Maraming salamat, Joey, for, ano, for honoring us with your presence tonight and uh, I know it uh, long overdue, pero siyempre, chumichempo din ako na marami kang ginagawa. So, and thank you po. Maraming maraming salamat, mm -hmm. sir. At kami nagpapasalamat kayo ang aming naging rest po coach for the week. No? At uh, didiretso muna tayo ngayon, sir, dun sa ating, ano, dun sa ating rest to coach. Yes. No? Ng ating mm -hmm. coach. No? Ako po ay, ano, no? hindi na ako mahihiyang magsabi na isa ako sa mga Pilipinong natuwa nung umuwi si Sir Joey, no? Sapagkat the more Filipinos na bumabalik sa Pilipinas na may da, may tangan-tangan ng karanasan, meron na po silang dalang experience, no? Meron na po silang dalang uh, iga nga eh baon na uh, hindi matatawarang mga insights, no, at experience. No? Kaya ang sabi po na ni Siad Abdel Nur, no, chase your dreams, no, which was the early which was the early years the early years of Joey's career but always you know, sabi niyan, parang bagay na bagay sa ito bro, you know, but always know the road that will lead you home again. And sabi nga kanina, the purpose, no, malinaw na malinaw po, aligned na aligned, as we always say here, significance, ang ating i-pursue and success will follow. No? And with that, no, magandang magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. Okay, nag-enjoy kayo, no? Marami pong nanood, maraming maraming salamat, share na lang po. Uh, para po uh, mas maraming makinabang sa kinento ng ating kaibigan with 30 plus years of experience nagsimula yata to 8 years old pa lang nung batang bata mm. meron ng 34 <laughs> years of experience <laughs> so next week ang kukunin ko yung medyo matanda talaga sa akin kasi nagmumuha akong matanda sa mga guests natin so ingat kayo dyan sa KL share and uh, again congratulations sa Joey lahat. sa opening nyo kanina sa Anabu no? and Anabu. more to come no? eh, kami po ay eh, talagang mango bravo kami dito Mm -hmm. Yung anak ko ay eh, talagang paborito yan. At saka yung pamilya namin dito nila, Chesno. So, Mami Sin, magandang gabi po sa inyo. At uh, sa saling ko, magkukontis po tayo. No? Magandang gabi po sa ating lahat. Stay safe. 
stay healthy and keep your wings up. God bless.